Hey, a friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I want to talk about tap tempo, how to access that feature so you can lay down the BPM before you start writing your riffs, or perhaps an easier, more efficient way of quote unquote tap tempoing using smart tempo. So first, what is tap tempo? Well, you probably have a riff or an idea in your head that you want to lay down into the logic. Maybe it's a beat, maybe it's a guitar riff, and you probably don't know the BPM off the top of your head. You know, maybe you're not a human metronome. Now, prior to smart tempo, it just made way more sense to identify the tempo of your riff before you lay it down instead of after the fact, especially if you're using MIDI or software instruments. You know, MIDI notes are tied to the grid. So let's say that our project started at maybe 120 BPM, and we just laid down a software instrument riff without using the metronome or without paying attention to the grid. But then we realize after the fact that the grid is way off from our performance. And if we adjust the BPM at all, we're kind of in a tough spot. If I suddenly adjust the BPM to something like 78 BPM to try to match my riff, that software instrument performance will now be way slower as a result. So tap tempo is a way for us to tap in roughly the tempo that we're going to be performing at. And Logic can adjust the tempo to that BPM, and then we can enable the metronome and start recording. To access tap tempo, we first have to go to Logic Pro 10 under key commands, edit. And we have to look for the tap tempo function by typing into the search field right here. And tap tempo is under global commands. Now there is not a key command associated with tap tempo out of the box. You have to assign one. And most key commands that revolve around the key T are taken up by other functions. So I've come up with a key command of shift option command T for tap tempo. And you can assign this just by going over to keyboard, learn by key label and, you know, hold option shift command T and it will assign those keys. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hold the three modifiers and just tap the letter T over and over. We also need to go to file project settings, synchronization. And we want to make sure that the sync mode is internal. And we want to make sure to enable auto enable external sync and tap tempo. Okay, so at this point, all I have to do is hold my three modifiers, shift option command, and tap the letter T over and over. And by the fifth tap, Logic will start to pay attention to the BPM that we're trying to tap. So you'll see the BPM up here in the control bar start to change and adjust to the tempo that I'm tapping away. So let's give it a try. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're at 108 BPM. And we can adjust this so it's not a decimal point of a BPM, just hard 108. Perfect. At this point, you can hit record and start recording at this tempo. Let's turn on the metronome. There we go. Now for me, I personally find trying to play to a metronome, I don't know, I just find it not very intuitive. I always am like second guessing myself, probably because I'm not very well rehearsed or practiced with a metronome. So instead, if I have a riff in my head, I just want to lay it down. I just want logic to figure out the tempo and then I can quantize and clean things up from there. So in this case, I'm going to use smart tempo to identify the tempo and then I'll clean it up after the fact. So first I want to set my smart tempo to adapt. And I have an instance of alter beat here. I'm going to use the musical typing to just tap a very basic drum beat. Okay, and I'm just gonna hit record and we'll see what happens here. Okay, wonderful. Let's hear that now with the metronome. Now let's turn the tempo back to keep. Okay, so Logic has identified the tempo using Smart Tempo. Obviously, my performance is not amazing. That's fine. So we've made sure to set our Smart Tempo back to keep. So there's going to be no tempo variations as I start to adjust things. I'm going to open the piano roll using key command P. And I'm going to select all the notes in this performance using command A. And I'm just going to hit Q to quantize. Okay, let's hear that. And I have a time quantized value of a 16th note, a classic quantizer, which can be set up here. 
either the classic or smart. Okay, at this point, I do not want tempo variations through the performance. I just wanted to get the performance laid down. So I wanna eliminate all of these tempo nodes. You can access the tempo track using this button right here to access the tempo global track lane. And I'm just gonna hit delete. Just keep in mind 84 BPM. Okay, we can see 84 with some decimal points. Let's set it to a solid 84 and let's hear our riff. And let's set it to a solid 85. Beautiful, so now I can repeat this section and I can even join them and then probably lay down a hi-hat as well. So let's find the hi-hat and we'll bring up note repeat here. Here we go. I'll give myself a little lead time. And you get the idea. So this is a quick way to use Smart Tempo to essentially tap tempo for software performances. We set the Smart Tempo mode to adapt, have Logic pay attention and identify where the tempo variations and what the tempo is more or less for our performance. We then turn Smart Tempo back to keep. We go into the region for this particular performance and we make sure to quantize everything to the grid. And then we remove the tempo notes from the tempo track and the global track lanes and adjust the tempo to where we'd like it to be actually. Now, the same thing can be done for audio files as well. So let's open a brand new project here. And we'll close this out. And I'm going to bring in an audio file that I've already recorded here. So we have a rock riff. And this is a DI'd guitar track. And, you know, it'd be much more fun to hear with an actual patch attached to it. So let's go into distorted guitars, classic drive here. So let's just hear it. So again, we want to identify the tempo and then we want to clean things up so we can work at a specific tempo and not one that changes over time. Now, I went ahead and recorded using adapt mode and it's pretty easy. We just need to get into the smart tempo editor and you can access that either using key command E or you can just double click the region, go to smart tempo and we're going to go to edit and we're going to go to apply region tempo to project tempo. And I'm just going to hit apply and we open the global track lanes and we can see here that the tempo has been embedded into this audio file. So let's hear this with click. Okay, but again, we're gonna do the same thing. In this case, we're gonna open up flex time and we're gonna set our flex time in this case, monophonic is fine for me. Now these blue bars on the region are identifying the tempo variations that have been found and applied to the tempo track. I'm gonna go to quantize and set this to 16th notes, and I'm gonna take a listen to make sure that things aren't too wonky. Okay, cool. So now, once again, let's get rid of all of these tempo nodes. Just keep in mind it's roughly around 82 BPM. Let's set this to 82 and let's hear the results now. Okay, that works for me. At this point, we can introduce a drummer track and we can drop it right on the bar here. But this is a very quick and easy way to essentially use smart tempo to identify the tempo and then set a specific tempo that you can start writing to. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.